Hey, what's up everyone? This is Greg. Welcome back to our Intermediate Core Data video tutorial series. In this video, we'll go back to the beginning and unravel the mysteries of the classes that make up Core Data. We'll assemble these objects together into a reusable class ourselves, rather than rely on the default Xcode app template. The starter Core Data app template from Xcode isn't ideal for several reasons. The core data objects, such as the manage object context and the persistent store, are properties on the app delegate. Although you probably want to initialize the core data stack in the app delegate when the app launches, there's no reason why the app delegate should contain these objects as properties. Second, there's also no good place to have helper methods. The Xcode template adds a save context method to the app delegate, for example. But chances are you're going to be saving the context in places other than the app delegate. That means to call it, you'd need to grab a reference from a view controller somewhere all the way back up to the app delegate to call that method. In the demo, we'll move all of the core data parts into a separate class. That will help you understand the pieces that are underneath core data from loading the data model to creating or loading the actual data store file, setting up the persistent store coordinator, and then finally setting up the managed object context. Then we'll be using this core data stack object throughout the rest of the series, and it's also a reusable piece that you can use in your other apps. This is going to be a demo and typing heavy session, but I think it's important to see all of the pieces of core data being typed out, and then we can look at it line by line or section by section as needed. First, we're going to build out the core data stack object. You can see I have this new file, core data stack.swift. Then we can delete a whole bunch of code from the app delegate and then do a little bit of refactoring around our view controllers. Let's get started with the basic class definition. I'm having the core data stack inherit from NS object. Later on, I'm going to want to pass this thing around using dynamic dispatch and selectors. And so I need it to be under the old Objective-C system. So we'll just have it inherit from NS object. Next, I have this static property that's just a constant module name that's set to my devices. And the idea here is that if you reuse this core data stack object in your other apps, you can just rename this to whatever the app name is so that things like the file names will match up. We've been working in the data model in this .xc data model D file where we set up our entities and our attributes and so on. This file actually gets compiled just like your Swift files get compiled down to object code and so on. This file gets compiled to a .momd file, which is the thing that's actually included in the app bundle that you can access, just like any other resource. Here we are back at the core data stack. Let's start by loading that managed object model. This is pretty standard. I'm going inside the main app bundle, and then I'm looking for a file called my devices, in this case, .momd. And then I'm just instantiating a NS managed object model with that URL. And in both cases, I've got this, I'm just unwrapping the optional directly. Usually you would want to be safe and check for this kind of thing first. In our case, if for whatever reason the manage object model isn't available, then that's a pretty fatal error because that means there won't be any core data. So in that case, we'll just kind of force unwrap it, and if something goes wrong, we'll know it right away. Now that we have the manage object model, the next thing is to set up the persistent store and persistent store coordinator. But first, we need a place to put our data store. Let's have a helper property to access the documents directory for the app. We're going to get the default NS file manager instance, and we're going to ask it for the URLs for the document directory for this user, which in this case is just for your app. That's going to return an array, usually only has one thing in there, and we're just going to take the last item of that array, which will be the documents directory that we can use. Next up then is the persistent store coordinator. 
when we initialize this, then we're also going to add a persistent store to it. And just as usual, we're going to have one persistent store. But remember, the persistent store coordinator can manage multiple stores if you have to. Let's go ahead and add that next. Here's our starter code. We're just going to instantiate NS persistent store coordinator. And you can see the initializer takes a managed object model, which we've set up the property for already. And then we're just going to return it at the end. Of course, in between is where we have to do the hard work of setting up the persistent store. Once we have our persistent store coordinator object, first we're going to generate the persistent store URL. This is just our documents directory, and then we're going to add on the name of our module, that in this case is mydevices.sqlite. And then inside the error handling here, we're going to try to add a persistent store to the coordinator. You can see the parameters here. It takes the persistent store type, which in this case we're using the nssqlite store type, there's also an XML format available, and you can make your own custom things if you like. So we're using the SQL type. Configuration is nil. We don't need any options. The URL is this URL we just generated. If there is no file there, it'll actually create one for us. So this will work on a clean launch of the app. And then the options, you've seen this before. We have the migrate persistent store automatically set to true. And then we also have the infer mapping model automatically set to true as well. And th that's going to enable lightweight migrations for us. And we'll come back to those options in a couple of videos when we look at mapping models. And then if something goes wrong, we're just going to do our usual fatal error and just generate a trap here. And return the coordinator, and that's it. We have a persistent store coordinator with one persistent store attached. Next up is our friend, the managed object context. This is the object that we've dealt with the most. And again, this is the scratch pad of sorts, or the working area that holds all of our managed objects. Let's add the property for that next. And here's our manage object context. It's pretty simple. First, we're just going to instantiate NS manage object context. And it takes this argument concurrency type, which we're setting to main queue concurrency type. There are main queue NS manage object contexts. And then there are also, you can also have a child context, which we'll look at in the final video of the series. But we're going to stick with the main queue one for now. And then it's got the concurrency type. Next, you have to assign a persistent store coordinator, which again is the property that we just set up. And then we just return that one. And that's wrapped here in our lazy property as usual. That's actually all we have for our core data stack. We've got those objects all set up. And now it's just a matter of instantiating them as needed. Let me just clean up here. Let's head over to the app delegate. You can see this marker here for the core data stack. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete all of this. There's one more thing here. There's this save context method as a convenience that's also added to the app delegate. I'm going to delete that too. And let's actually implement that over in our own core data stack. This implementation here should look pretty familiar. We've written this kind of code here a few times already in the beginner series throughout our view controllers. And now we have it wrapped up in this nice helper method that we can access from anywhere. Let's head back to the app delegate. 
and we've got a few problems here that we need to fix. First, I'm going to create a property for our new core data stack. We'll make it a lazy property, which means it'll be initialized on first access. And we've got a few errors coming in here now. First thing here is the code where we're looking for devices to see if we have any records. And if there's no data, then we're going to call that add test data method. This is a pretty simple fix. We could just add our core data stack here to the front, like so. Because remember, manage object context is a property on the core data stack. I'll just go ahead and do that over here as well. This one we'll actually come back to. Here's our add test data. I'm going to do the same thing. Wherever it mentions the manage object context, I'm just going to add core data stack in front of it. And here's a call to save context. And remember, we've refactored that out into the core data stack. And it's called save main context, like that. And another call to save context. I'm going to replace that with a save main context on core data stack. Let's head up to our one final error which is up here. Now this is the code that passes on the manage object context to our view controllers. So it's looking for a set manage object context selector, which will be a method over there. And I need to change that to a set core data stack. That looks pretty good. Now the problem is all of our view controllers don't have a core data stack property. They have a managed object context property. We're going to have to go through and fix that. Let's start with the devices table view controller. We've got our manage object context property. I'm going to delete that. And now I've replaced it with this core data stack property. I'm making it an implicitly unwrapped optional because we're going to have to pass this in down the chain. Let me go ahead and move that to our four other view controllers. And now it should be a simple matter of, again, finding those managed object context references and changing them to access the core data stack. Here's a call to save. I'm going to replace that to call save main context. And there's two more. Let's go to another view controller. And here is a do catch that's doing a save. And again, we can replace this all of this and just use our helper method. Let's move on to the device details. Here's some more boilerplate. I'm going to replace that again. And another call to save that I can remove. Now this one's a little bit different. We're pushing a view controller onto the stack, and we're passing in the manage object context. But remember, we're not passing the manage object context anymore. We're passing the core data stack. So I'm just going to replace that so that we pass the stack object along. Got one more view controller to look at. And again, we're passing on the manage object context. One more place that I forgot. Ah, another example where we're passing on the manage object context. And instead, just pass on the core data stack. Let's build and run. And it'll be a little anticlimactic because the app should just run as usual. Here we are. We have our same data. But the difference is that our app delegate is much shorter now. It doesn't have all of that core data dependency built right into the app delegate. And now we have this separate core data stack object that can go on its own. And now when you make a new app, you can just do new project. You could actually uncheck that 
use core data to not use the template, and then just move this core data stack object, if you like it, into your other apps. That's it for this video tutorial, and I hope you've gained some more understanding of the classes that make up core data. Your challenge is to have a quick break and then continue onward with your new core data stack object in hand with video number two, where you'll add a new attribute to the data model and learn about some additional things you can do with attributes. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.